All right, let's see if I can do this one. <laughs> this is the toughest one I've done so far. What is going on, my super sandwiches? <laughs> oh, fuck, that's hard. What is going on, my super sandwiches? Geek them here, and today we're doing another Q&A where I answer your questions from the Ask FM. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. That was all right. All right, let's go ahead and do it. Geek them Q&A, here we go. In the history of Trunks timeline, why nobody, most likely Bulma, traveled to New Namek to use the Dragon Balls to bring the Z Fighters back to life? Bulma knows that they have Dragon Balls and that they would help her. At this point, the Dragon Balls maybe are already upgraded. Piccolo should also fuse with Kami. Well, Piccolo was dead, so that wouldn't have happened. Piccolo was killed by 17 and 18 way before he had the chance to do that, and then, of course, Kami died as well. However, your first question does stand, Super Gogito. That's the name of the guy who sent the question. In that, it never really made sense to why they never went to New Namek. Now, of course, some fans will say, well, they couldn't find New Namek. Well, Goku was able to find it, and thus, I'm pretty sure that Kaio was able to find it. So, I just have my doubts about that. Plus, Bulma knew, you know, how to get to Namek, so I'm pretty sure she, she could that her and her father could have invented a ship to get to New Namek and use their Dragon Balls to bring the Z Fighters back. I may do a video. I've had this idea dancing around in my head for a while of why the Cell Saga should have never happened and all the different reasons as to why it really makes no sense. You know, I love Dragon Ball, but there's lots of logic holes in that entire saga as far as things they could have done in the future. Not the Cell Saga, but the alternate, the, fu the, the Trunks future. There's lots of things they could have done to save the future, you know what I mean? And they didn't do it. And so that's one of those things where I guess Toriyama just forgot, which is typical. I may do that video down the road, but your point does stand, Super Gogeta, or Gogito. On to the next one. I was wondering if the other world we see in DBZ is only for Universe 7, and do you think we will see the other other worlds from other universes from Missile HDZ? Um, I'm not sure, of course. Uh, good question. However, in Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F, Frieza does say that he was in Earth's Hell, and that line really took me back, as well as a lot of other Dragon Ball fans, a little bit confused what he meant by that. What do you mean, Earth's Hell? Like, what... You know what I mean? What do you... What do you mean? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that implies that Earth has its own hell and Namek does. I don't know. Um, but I do think that there are, quote-unquote, other worlds because of the fact that, I don't know if you've checked it out yet, but the uh, third chapter of Toyotaro's manga, Champa talks about the, uh, the Kais from Universe 6, or Universe 7 specifically. So that tells me that there's more Kais in every universe. So that means there should be another world, right? <clears throat> Makes sense. <clears throat> All right, multiple part question here. What was the big one? Let's start here. All right, part one. In your what kind of villain do you want in Dragon Ball Super Geekdom Reads comments video, you said Dragon Ball was flat out better than Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach. I don't remember saying that. I said I've never seen Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach. Unless you have read and watched them all and given them a chance, more than a couple chapters, you can't judge. Uh, I haven't seen any of it. To me, it's better probably because I haven't seen it, but I don't remember ever saying anything negative about Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach. Unless I was kidding. I probably said it, like, jokingly, you know. Understand that, you know, I do have a sense of humor, believe it or not. Um, continuing on, the worldwide sales data for each series overall and the nightly viewership of each would also clash with that. Well, the thing is, yes, I know about the popularity of One Piece and Naruto. I'm very aware of it. However... I don't give a fuck about how popular something is. It doesn't necessarily mean that I like it. You know, fucking there's tons of fucking shows and movies and shit that's really popular that I never got into. It's just everybody's different. I don't care. Like, you know, you're not really going to tell me that. I am going to talk about Dragon Ball success because I like Dragon Ball, but I don't care if One Piece has more success. It doesn't mean that I'm going to freaking start becoming a, more of a fan of it, right? Only in the USA is DB high above the others in popularity among common people. Actually, that's false because in Latin America, my friend, Dragon Ball and Saint Seiya are the two biggest things they have down there. So, you're wrong about that one, pal. One Piece has outsold DBD by 100 million copies. Last official count, Naruto had was 15 million behind. Yes, that's true, except the problem with that is One Piece has more volumes. So, how fair is that? 42 volumes to fucking like 100 and something? That's... You can't make that comparison, dude. 
Those three series are ranked one, two, and three in sales. My point is, don't judge things like that. Dragon Ball has a great story. DBZ is much weaker in storytelling. I agree, especially in the Boo Saga. Still amazing, but there are a lot of inconsistencies created by Toriyama not knowing his own work. I agree with that as well. I can think of a bunch of manga and comics that have better written story overall. Me too. Yu Yu Hakusho has a much better story from what I remember. I have to go back and rewatch it. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist and Brotherhood and Code Geass come to mind as amazing stories. I don't like absolute statements like it's just better. Every popular story like DBZ and One Piece has strengths and weaknesses. I agree with that part for sure. I was probably just kidding around, bro. So I'm taking it a little personal there. I'm very aware of the popularity of those other franchises. Did you like Dragon Ball Minus? Yes or no? If no, explain why not. I did not like Dragon Ball Minus. Uh, there was no story in Dragon Ball Minus. Dragon Ball Minus contradicted everything. Not just the Bardock special, because that's one thing I couldn't really care about. But it contradicts that, because it is Toriyama's, you know, little, um, I guess, uh, version of the story. But what I hated about Dragon Ball Minus is that it was just like three pages of just... Freezer's gonna blow up the planet. Let's send Goku to Earth, and that was it. There was no story. There was no struggle. And the reality is, the Bardock special does have a better story. Point blank, it actually has a fucking story. Um, Dragon Ball Minus just came off very, very lazy and haphazard, and I'm not a fan of it. And most, I would say, most fans would probably agree with me. I, I've only spoken to maybe two people that have actually liked Dragon Ball Minus, and none of them have said it's better than the Bardock special. So, if you haven't read it, check it out. It's very short, very simple, and kind of pointless. So, yeah. Moving on, Dragon Ball and Jocko, the Galactic Patrol man manga, Patrolman manga, are the only materials 100% canon, correct? I'm not going to get into a canon argument here. I'm going to be doing a video on canon eventually. It's going to be a big, 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 big video that's going to take me fucking years to fucking do. But uh, if you're asking me whether or not these are, you know, if your version of canon is did Toriyama write it, then and is it originally a comic? If those are the two, like, if those are the two measures of source material, is is it a manga and did Toriyama write it? And if those two are the two primary factors in your canon, then yes, then yes. There are obviously other ones like Nekomajin and Sandland, which do have Dragon Ball characters in them, but um. That's joke stuff. I don't think Sandland was it was really that much of a joke, but it's not meant to be taken too seriously. Jocko actually is a prequel to Dragon Ball, so uh, there you go. I hope that answers your question. Why don't fans like Dragon Ball minus? I just answered that question. Which version of the North American Dragon Ball manga releases is the best? I love the full color ones. Full color manga is my favorite because it's in full color. And Viz did announce that they're going to be releasing them in full color. The rest of, not just the first three volumes. So I am very happy about that. How accurate is the Dragon Ball manga translations? Um... It depends. Some of it is good. Some of it is not. Uh, there are a lot of what the... I think the Konzenshu folks invented this term, viz-isms. Uh, there's quite a few of these where they make changes and things like that. There's far too many translation changes that are contradictory. But the best thing to do is to read the manga and then watch the series in Japanese. And you can pick up on some of the differences. The, the ones that kind of bug me real bad are like Vegerot and Jin Bu. And I might do a loss in translation about that. Viz-isms, there's just so many of them. I can't even, I can't even like list them all. So it's, I'd say about 80%, 85%, maybe 90, maybe. What's Bird Studio? That's Akira Toriyama's um, studio, pretty point blank. What ifs are gay, wouldn't you say? I don't, I don't think so. Do you think you could write a script for a Dragon Ball movie with ease? What's clickbait? Clickbait is when you write an article or you do a video that is meant to sucker people into watching it through nefarious and shady means for the simple point of you getting clicks. For example, if you do a video on Dragon Ball, let's say, and you do a video that says... Confirmed, Brawly coming back, question mark, question mark, question mark. For Dragon Ball Super, that's clickbait because there's no evidence to support it. If you know anything about Dragon Ball, you know it's not going to happen. 
there's no article, there's nothing at all. You're literally making news up and speculating. And the speculation is usually filled with tons of holes from people who don't have a fucking clue about Dragon Ball, who don't know shit about Toriyama, shit about Toei. And that's what clickbait pretty much is. Uh, over in the wrestling community, for example, if you go read an article about wrestling, sometimes you'll see, like, for example, like trash websites, which I'm not going to name, will give you a news article. And then they'll say, click here for pictures of Stephanie McMahon. And the pictures don't take you anywhere. It's just a bullshit link. That's clickbait. It's stuff to make you click stuff to get clicks that has no fucking fiber or nothing that matters. What are some long-term Dragon Ball video projects that you are working on? Great question. I have a few ideas in the back of my head. Um, the uh, the big one I'm working on now is I'm doing a Dragon Ball in depth on fusions. That's going to be coming up very soon. I'm working on it, scripting it, doing the research, talking about all the different kinds of fusions. Uh, I have a lot of video ideas danced around in the back of my head. I've got another one about uh, are Dragon Ball characters really past the speed of light, which will be a discussion. Um, I do plan on, of course, dropping the news whenever I can. Um, I do plan on doing something with the Dragon Ball movies. There's just a lot of ideas I've got. Uh, most of them are revolving around Dragon Ball in depth. I mean, in case you haven't noticed on my channel, the videos I put the most love into are Dragon Ball in Death and Lost in Translation. Those are my two main series. And, of course, the Dragon Ball Super Weekly Reviews, which are going to continue. Uh, and the manga reviews, too. So, uh, that's going to continue. Uh, and then there's other videos like discussions that I have with other YouTubers, which I am going to work on. But those are more like kind of podcasts other than just talk Dragon Ball. They're kind of just laid back. You know, like I did a video, How Strong Are 19 and 20, with me and Mike, and we just kind of just shot the shit. There's not a lot of editing, put some video clips in. They're they're simple. In a, in a way, they're simple. I don't put, I mean, I put love into them, but not as much as Dragon Ball in depth, where I'm making sure that every shot counts. I'm getting a phone call here live on the air, but I'm not going to answer it because I'm busy doing a Q&A. Fucking hate when that happens. I hate when I'm recording and I get a call, yo. It's like the worst thing. Do you make money off having websites? You can, and I have. So, yes. What would you ask Toriyama if you met him? I don't even know, yo. That's a lot of. That's a big loaded question. I'd ask him a lot of stuff. Um, I'd ask him. I'd ask him, dude. I don't even. I would ask. You know what I would ask him? I'd say Toriyama Sensei. If Captain Ginyu switched bodies with Gogeta or with Gotenks, what would happen after 30 minutes? That's what I would ask him. That's what I want to know. I would also ask him about Vegeta's mother and where the Dragon Balls really originally came from, like which Namekian invented them first. And he'd probably blow smoke up my ass, but hey, that's how it rolls. So, how rich is Toriyama? Very rich. He was actually, he's actually a, a multi-millionaire, you know, in every sense of the word, even before Dragon Ball. And of course, how much money do you think Dragon Ball made him? I mean, shit, uh, multi-millionaire. What's better, manga or anime? Which do you prefer? Great question. Very good question. Very polarizing question. I love both, but I do prefer the Dragon Ball anime more. I love the music. I love watching it. It's easier to digest when you're watching it. Um, I love the, the the voices, the performances. It's like a book versus a movie, you know? I like novels. I like good movie adaptations. So I'm just more entertained by film than I am literature. So that's kind of why I like anime a little more than manga. Nothing wrong with manga, though. I love the manga. Please make a Dragon Ball Canon video. I'm, I'm, I said it. It's on. It's in the works. Do any of your subscribers know how you look like? Actually, a few do. Are you going to buy Fukatsu no F when it comes out on Blu-ray? Most likely. Why does Funimation change the BGM on Dragon Ball sometimes? Why don't they just stick to the original music? They don't do that anymore. That was something that was in place back in the 90s. Uh, I don't really like the reasoning behind it. It was very insulting. I, I might do a video about that, too. Uh, it's very, very insulting and disrespectful that they change the music. And I know a lot of people like Bruce Faulkner, and that's fine. I have no problem with Bruce Faulkner's music at all. But it's the reason why they decided to go with an in-house composer. And it's just very disrespectful to American audiences and to kids you know, nowadays. Um, that was a Barry Watson call, I believe, back then. Now, of course, with Chris Sabat getting more control in Funimation, you're not going to see that again, which is why people who are clamoring for Bruce to come back, listen, honestly, dude, like, I like Kikuchi. Bruce does have some good songs, all right? Real talk, Bruce does have some really fun themes. Um, he does. There's, and he's a talented guy, no question about it. 
Um, but he's not coming back. Not for Dragon Ball. Maybe for something else. Maybe for like DVD menus or something or video games. But not for Dragon Ball. It's just the anime industry has changed. How would you get so smart at Dragon Ball stuff? I watch it a lot. I read it a lot. I read up on it a lot. It's pretty much a borderline obsession since I was like a teenager. So there you go. Is there any plot holes in the Jango, in the Jocko manga? Uh, if you're not talking Dragon Ball Minus, there really aren't. Except for the fact that Goku's 3, which is still kind of a debatable thing because we don't actually see infant Goku in the manga. So uh, the main plot hole in the Jocko manga is the existence of tights. Tights existing makes no sense because it's not the fact that Bulma has an older sister. It's the fact that we have 42 volumes of Dragon Ball um, manga, 153 episodes of Dragon Ball anime, 291 Dragon Ball Z, 64 GT, fucking 18, 19 fucking movies, uh, and a shitload of video games, and there's never been a mention of tights not even once. I mean, couldn't Toriyama have just, like, explained, you know, hey, uh... Yeah, they wiped Bulma and Dr. Brief's memory with one of them Men in Black gimmicks. Like, why couldn't they just do that, you know? Tights is a big problem. I've talked to Black and Fist and Quaman about this. And even though they're positive guys about Dragon Ball, they really are. They can't stand the existence of tights. I, I don't know if I can't stand it, but it does bug me that there was nothing at all. It's like Tarble. Like, Tarble and tights are both similar in similar places, but tights is even more not believable, you know? Because Tarble, Vegeta probably just assumed that Tarble was dead all these years. Tights is a different story. They knew she went off with Jocko, so. Do you have kids? If so, is his name Gohan or Goten? I don't have kids, but I may name him that. How, how long do you think Toriyama, how long do you think it took Toriyama to come up with a screenplay I forgot to know F1 sitting? No, I think it was multiple sittings. Hi, hi. How do you say the Gallic gun in Japanese? Vegeta says Gallic ho. So, um, BLG no longer canon. Ah, the canon thing. Think about it like this. Toriyama wrote... No. Yusuke Watanabe wrote Battle of Gods. Toriyama made changes. Does that make it canon in, in your eyes? You tell me. If Toriyama touches something... Does that make it canon? Okay. If that's canon, then Dragon Ball Minus is canon. You can't have it both ways. See, again, it's very difficult to figure canon out. This is why, like, I try to avoid these questions because I'm going to do a whole video about it. It's probably going to eat away at my life. This might be a 45-minute video, guys. When I do that canon video, it may legitimately be an hour long. I'm scared. I I'm scared. I'm being real with you. I'm fucking terrified. I am terrified of doing that canon video. Terrified. It's going to be... <laughs> I have to do it. I have to fucking do it, but there you go. Um, so anyways, and now they're retelling the story in Super with other people writing, not just Yusuke Watanabe. Now it's other writers, Toei, uh, involved. It's up to you to figure out which one is canon. The Battle of Gods arc in Super is going to be different than the Battle of Gods movie, so it's almost like two different universes. It's like two different branches of the same story. Just... Think of it like that and get some rest. Fucking incredible, yo. I hate talking about it. And it's not the fans. It's not you guys. It's, it's fucking Toei. They never just... Uh, it, it's confusing. Why do you hate Dragon Ball Absalon? It's the best fan-made Dragon Ball series. I don't think it's the best fan-made Dragon Ball series. I think a bridge is still at the top, but I do not hate Dragon Ball Absalon. I may do a video about Dragon Ball Absalon. I think with Dragon Ball Absalon, if you look at it for what it is, which is another Melavelli's interpretation of Dragon Ball with, inf with Western influences versus the original idea of Dragon Ball. In other words, it's a Western version using Dragon Ball characters. If you look at it like that, it's much easier to digest. I know a lot of people hate it because it's not really Dragon Ball. The characters don't act how they should. Um, it's kind of over the top, but that's kind of what it is. It's just his story, you know, using Dragon Ball. It's basically fan fiction with art and shit. How old are you? I assume you're in your 30s. It would be embarrassing if you are in your 30s and you still do videos about Dragon Ball. Well, you'd be surprised, first of all, as to how many people are in their 30s that love Dragon Ball. So I think you're pretty embarrassing yourself for even saying that to me. And I guarantee you that even though I'm 30 years old, I guarantee you, bro, that I could probably lift more weights than you. I could probably run faster than you. 
I'm in better shape at 30 than I was at 20, bro. So, you know, lick it. You know, suck it easy. Can't stand people who say do that stupid shit. Why are you called Big D? Is it because you're big as in fat or is it because you have a big D? I was called Big D in seventh grade. That's where I got my name from. I've said it before. Piccolo versus Dabra. Dabra. I would love for Dragon Ball Super to have a villain like Dabrun, I guess Dabra, not in terms of looks or abilities, just in manners and conduct. I agree with you. Dabra is very underrated. Even though Dabra was a villain, he never insulted anyone and has even complimented Gohan for his fighting skills. Yeah, and he had some badass techniques, bro. Badass techniques. I, I, Dabra is very underrated. Would you like it if Broly was brought back in DBS and they gave him a better character and a better origin story? Absolutely not. Hey, Geekdom, would a sun-dipped cell powered by a Black Lantern ring after having a wild orgy with five midges be able to be Super Mario after getting some princess pussy? Absolutely yes. Who would you fuck, Cell Freezer or Fat Boo? Probably Fat Boo because he can, like, fuck with his face to make it look like a bitch. You know, like a chick, excuse me. Why do I get a boner watching your videos? Am I am not gay. I, hey, I won't judge you, bro, because maybe I have that sexy voice that you like. Goku versus Superman. I want you to settle this once and for all, maybe even do a video on it. That's not happening. <laughs> Just to make everyone shut up. I'm sick and tired of hearing people arguing about it. Yeah, I know. I don't know if I'll do a video on it. Martian Van Hunter, Manhunter versus Pickle at the end of Z. I think Manhunter would win even without his telepathic powers. I think he would as well. Sorry, Quinn. Quaman, excuse me. Justice League versus the Z Fighters. Probably the Justice League, honestly. I hate to say it, but I think so. Anti-Monitor versus Beerus and the Dark Monitor versus Weiss. I have no idea what that's about. Golden Frieza versus Golden King Cold. Assuming that King Cold's form in DBZ is his second, I think Gold Cold. <laughs> Gold Cold is a fucking awesome name. Would Cream Frieza. Um, probably. I, I have no... There's just nothing... There's no information I can gather for that. You versus me in a fight to the death. Who would win? I have some experience in karate and taekwondo. Sorry if I spelled it wrong. Well, the fact that you took Taekwondo says that I'm going to win because once I get your ass to the ground, bro, you're going to be fucking praying for me to let you go. Kenshiro from the Fist of the North Star versus Goku. If Kenshiro hit Goku, it's game over. I don't know. I haven't seen Fist of the North Star in years. Uh, Goku with God Power now and Fukata no F would probably win, but before that probably would be Kenshiro. Strongest anime character you know that is not Whis or from DBZ? I have to think about that one because I haven't watched other anime in a long, 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 long time. Piccolo on steroids versus the Hulk. Hulk. Have you ever tried Balut? Is that that fucking like raw like meat from Lebanon? Because I have not, but I've heard of it. Okay, two-part question here. Part one. I found it funny after watching your What Villain Would You Like video that nearly all of the ideas for the character traits of the villains are extremely similar to villains in Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach. In my opinion, that among the big four DBZ, not DB, has the weakest villains in terms of character, non-combat villains, and the other series have so much depth and backstory and have much better developed motivations along with not always being able to be beaten with just strength. What do you think it says about DBZ Toriyama versus the other authors and stories? No, I mean, great question. That's from Trent, by the way. Hi, Trent. Great question. Toriyama is a good writer. But, obviously, there are other writers that are better. And remember, guys, just because you are influenced by something does not mean that what you are influenced by is better. You can take a good idea and make it better. You can do that. And that seems to be what these other writers did. They took the template for how to create villains, and they pretty much added backstory. Because they recognize, as writers, that backstory is important. Now, Frieza does have a backstory, Cell does have a backstory, and Boo does have a backstory. So I, they all have backstories, but the development may be better in other series. It just depends on your point of view. Hi. Hello. Do you believe Mystic Gohan was stronger than SSJ3 Goku? I had a debate with someone, and he or she said Mystic Gohan was even stronger than SSJ3 Goku, or Gohan was the strongest at the end of the Boo saga. He or she, she said Toriyama never said Gohan was the strongest. Hope you answer my question. Well, I am going to answer it. Toriyama never said Gohan was the strongest. That was from a... Somebody claimed it was from an interview, and Toriyama never said that. There is no such interview. 
as far as Mystic Gohan being stronger than Goku, that is the debate, isn't it? I think Goku and SSJ3 can put out a lot more energy. The problem is that, like we've talked about time and time again, um, <laughs> it, it's, you know, the SSJ3 form is flawed. It is flawed. It burns energy too fast. So... Goku would just tire himself out if Gohan can can withstand the initial onslaught, and then Gohan would take him because Mystic Gohan's key is like unlimited. It has no it has no time limit. You know what I mean? So Mystic Gohan would win the fight, even though Goku might be a better strategist. See, it'd be a tough fight, but I think Gohan would win. Why does everyone think Black and Fist is Indian? The guy's clearly Chinese. Sincerely, Ray Charles. That's a diss at fucking Charlie Wheat, and I think I know who sent that. By the way. Did Beerus say he used 70% to beat Goku? Is that 10% more than was needed as Goku is 6 and Beerus is 10? No, 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 no. I, I answered this in the last Q&A, but I'll quickly recap. Beerus used 70% the entire fight. Goku used 80% in the cave and then 100% space when he powered up and shit, you know, when he went SSJ. Beerus at 70% still beat 100% Goku, so... South Kai versus Goku SSJ3. That's a great fucking question, yo. From Obia Beku. I'm going to go with Goku SSJ3 just because I think he boo evolved. This is the last question. Part one response to your Toriyama sexist video. Each one of the, from Trent, by the way, each one of the four has the male characters outshine the female characters. However, Toriyama is the only one who has useless weaklings as female characters. The female characters in the other big four are pretty powerful. Well, I would say 18 is pretty strong. So is Chi-Chi and Videl. But, okay, let's keep going. In Naruto, for example, the main heroine is one of the top five in the world in the power at the end. And debatably top three right behind Naruto and Sasuke. In many other types... Okay. Oh, I'm sorry about that. In many other types of manga, the strong female characters dominate, like Black Lagoon, for example. What do you think, Geekdom? Yes, but I still don't think Toriyama's sexist. I think that he just made a shonen manga with tough guys. But he's done other manga like Dr. Slump. I mean, people have argued that Arali from Dr. Slump is more powerful than, like, Frieza. I mean, I don't know about that. I don't know about that one, but people have said that. Uh, so Toriyama has... Th that's the point, is that maybe Dragon Ball... Maybe Dragon Ball is like, you know, just Dragon Ball. It's the way he did Dragon Ball. But there are other manga where Toriyama features females in strong roles. So I don't think Toriyama the man is sexist. And even in Dragon Ball, they have strong roles. I, uh, but again, like your question earlier, Trent, there are other stories that do things better than Dragon Ball. I'm not going to deny that one. Last question. Yo, Big D, just wondering if you know when Return of Goku and Friends takes place because it looks like Goku goes to Shiga at the end. Yo, Son Goku and his friend's return takes place two years after the death of Kid Buu. However, with Dragon Ball Super writing over that, that may not be the case anymore. So, but when it first came out, it was two years after Kid Buu died. So that is it for this episode. Oh, and by the way, Goku does not go God. It's just the color. That's it. That is it for Geek Them q and I hope you all enjoyed it. It went a little bit longer this time because of last week's short episode. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. And I will, as always, catch you guys down the road. Ask.fm slash Geekdom 101. See you then.